Okay, so let's talk a little bit about build chip, but in the context of this particular series, let's talk a little bit about the front end side first before we kind of get into the detail about build chip. So in the context of this particular series, I'm going to be using a Flutterflow as my tool of choice for my presentation layer. Now, of course, build chip can work with a whole host of different type of presentation layers, but in the context of this particular series, I'm just going to talk about Flutterflow, but just consider it available and be in, uh, integrated with any front end stack that you choose. So we all know that um, in a front end uh, sort of visual builder here, we've got a, a couple of examples of some mobile applications that kind of sit in the middle there. Let's talk a little bit about kind of what Flutterflow can do for us in terms of a visual builder. Well, we know we can build user interfaces. That's super important because the role and the responsibility of Flutterflow there is to build good looking user interfaces. We know we can create logical flows and in the context of something like Flutterflow, we can string a series of actions together that pretty well much makes UI level decisions that then gears itself up ready for us to make that call out to a back-end service in order to kind of either run business logic or bring additional data into our application. Now, of course, in something like Flutterflow, we can extend the functionality if we wanted to. We can create uh, more kind of sort of custom code that we can execute at various places in our application. But generally, they should be very much geared to driving pretty well much the UI from a presentation perspective. Remember, I said previously in the previous segment on the three-tier architecture where I said the presentation layer needs to be as simple as it possibly can. And of course, a great thing about something like Flutterflow is that it allows us to deploy our applications directly to the app stores themselves. That is a, a, a great time saving sort of function of that particular platform. Now, the key thing to remember here is that what is Flutterflow doing behind the scenes? Well, really, it's just generating code. That's all it is actually doing. And there is a very big similarity to something like BuildChip because that's exactly what BuildChip is doing also behind the scenes is that it's writing code for you, which can be hidden from you don't have to see it but it does have the power for you to be able to open it up if you don't mind a bit of coding you can get in there and you can customize it but we'll talk more about that later in the actual series itself so let's talk then a little bit more on the right hand side there about uh, build chip because this is where the similarities come in because a flood of flow and a build chip kind of uh, operate in a very, very similar way. With a Flutterflow, you kind of uh, would put actions together. Well, actually in BuildChip, you put things called nodes together. And it's really just very, very similar. You kind of start at the top, you work your way through a series of nodes, you're making decisions all the way through until you get to the end. And of course, at the end, you're either returning back results back into Flutterflow itself, or you could be integrating with a third party service. So for example, it could be that your front end application needs to send an email. Well, we know we can't do that directly from something like Flutterflow, but what we can do is we can send the, the email recipient, the subject, the actual content of the email. We can send that all through to BuildChip and then we can let BuildChip integrate with a third party service to actually send the email on the behalf of the front end application. That's just one simple example of how BuildChip can help you to do those type of activities in your front end application, which we know can't be done directly. And of course, the other part of BuildChip is that it can store sensitive information. So if you've been using something like Flutterflow for a while, then you'll know that um, storing API keys, for example, it could be that you could be talking to OpenAI uh, to kind of, uh, you know, get messages back. Um, you know, you're going to have to pass your API key over the wire. That's not particularly super safe because, of course, if you're transmitting the API key, certainly in a web application, you're exposing that API key that could also be obtained by somebody else. And then it could be then you and then it could be uh, wiping out all of your credits you have in the open AI platform. But the fantastic thing about BuildChip is that BuildChip can securely look after your API key and doesn't expose it to the front end. Your front end can then make those requests into BuildChip and then BuildChip on the behalf of the front end application can then be making that request out to something like open AI to then perform that request and then get the result come back and then feed it back up to your front end application all without exposing your API keys. So that's one great uh, sort of feature of BuildChip, um, which um, you can tap into really, really easily and very conveniently.
And the other major thing here, and this is for both the tools, is the fact is it can accelerate your development. Now, accelerating development, if you're not a coder and you're not into all of that kind of stuff, we know there is a bit of a steep learning curve when it comes to coding. Um, certainly, uh, BuildChip will make it very, very easy for you to be able to put all of these logical flows together. And of course, hopefully won't require you to do any kind of coding. But of course, if you wanted to tap into some coding um, or you've kind of got a basic skill in, in that area, then of course, you can do that with inside BuildChip as well. So one of the things that's great to take into BuildChip is, is maybe some kind of element of, uh, of understanding of sort of software concepts. You don't have to be any master or anything like that, but it's good to have a, uh, you know, a general idea of some of the things that you would, uh, you would typically need to know in, in order for you to use something like BuildChip. So just some terminology, something like that would be really helpful because hopefully that will then make perfect sense when it comes to when you start really getting into the nuts and bolts of using build chip but of course if you're not don't worry about it we'll walk through in this particular series where you won't need to have any kind of knowledge of coding um, but certainly if you've got something that'll be really really handy so that's pretty well much what build chip is what i want to do now is i want to talk to you very uh, very much about kind of like a, an example i want to put a scenario on the table um, and i'll walk through with you on that now Okay, so let's talk about then the sample scenario that I'm going to put on the table for you. So let's look at a typical haircut booking app. Now, I won't read all of this to you, but this is a, a typical haircut booking app or any type of booking app, I guess, that you might have um, where it has a number of features. Um, and a lot of these features um, can be quite complex. Now, what I'm going to show you now, of course, is the specific services or at least the uh, features of this application, which could be available um, in terms of calling out directly to a database. So do you remember I said in three tier architecture where we had those kind of arrows that kind of had the mobile app here, had the database over here, and we're making that call out and we're getting that result back. Well, what you're seeing on screen at the moment is pretty well much a good example of, of us bypassing a back end. So keep that in the back of your mind. We're bypassing the back end. We're getting that data directly. Now, the complexity comes in, of course, when we then look at then providing those more key features like actually book doing the booking in the first place. There's a couple of little challenges we might have the table. Let me show you those. Booking of appointments, preventing double bookings. I mean, how would you do that in a front end application? How would you prevent a double booking without putting a lot of complexity, a lot of check-in routines of inside your front end? There could be a bit of a challenge there. What about sending appointment confirmation emails or reminder notifications? Well, uh, I just mentioned briefly just a moment ago, the fact that you can't actually typically do that from a front end application. You would need to use some kind of third party service in order to be able to send those emails or reminder notifications. And what about cancellation of appointment? You know, how do you enforce rules? So for example, it could be that somebody would like to cancel an appointment, but maybe only two hours before their time slot. Well, is, is that allowed? Can they do that? Would you want to let a stylist down two hours before their appointment? It's not ideal. So there may be that they can't actually perform those cancellations or they might be, uh, they may have to pay a cancellation fee or something like that. Again, they're intelligent business rules that really should be sat with inside the back end application. So what about implementing functionality to find the next available appointment? Now, you could probably do this actually in the front end, but likely what you would want to do is you'd want to make a call out to the back end to actually let the back end handle this because there could be a number of different things that need to be checked first. So, of course, the back end can do that, can do all the hard work and then just simply then return the results back to then the uh, the actual front end application for it to then uh, move forward with allowing the uh, the the actual booking to occur if it's found an available appointment again all features that should be done with inside the back end itself so you can see how things can get quite crazy uh, without the use of a back end application because it's likely you're going to find that very very difficult to do inside the front end application so this is where BuildChip comes in. This is where it can make some of these decisions for you because logically you're going to be checking on a number of different things until you get to the end to say, actually, I've gone down this particular route. Things must be great. Let's return that positive result back to the front end and then let it do what it needs to do. Or it could be the BuildChip thinks, actually, you've uh, you've come across a rule here that doesn't check out, is not allowed. We then need to return back a result back to our front end application to say, actually, Actually, you can't make that change or do that particular function. That is what BuildChip is perfectly geared to do.
So that's just a very, very quick summary there of BuildChip. We, I've gone a million miles an hour in terms of what it can do. We are now going to tap into much more detail about BuildChip and hopefully it will inspire you to then start using a tool like this to then provide some additional complexities and solve uh, common problems that you might have in your front end.